أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. Praise to be Allah, Lord of the worlds, the most gracious, the most merciful. Master of the day of judgment, it is you we worship and upon you we call for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those you have blessed, not of those against whom there is anger, nor of those who are misguided. Thank you, Talha. <laughs> சீராரும் வலனமென திகழ்வரத கண்டமெது தெக்கணமும் அரிசிலந்த திராவிடன திருநாடும் ரத்த சிறு பிறை நுதலும் தரிசனரும் திலகமுமே அத்திலக வாசனை போல் அணித்துலகும் இன்பமுற எத்திசையும் புகழ் வணக்க இருந்த பெரும் தமிழனுகே தமிழனுகே May I now invite Dr. S. Shamshad Begum, President of the Association of Polymer Engineers, to extend a warm welcome to the distinguished gathering. Good morning, everyone. It's a moment of pleasure to welcome each one of you present today for the National Level Technical Symposium Micron 24, which is organized by the Department of Polymer Engineering. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. R. Rajesh Babu sir, Divisional Head, Compound Development Apollo Tires Limited, Global R&D Chennai, for accepting to be our esteemed chief guest, despite of his busy schedule. At this forum, I need to say this. Whenever we approach sir for anything else, like an internship, placement or any type of technical support for students academy or uh, research related activities sir always support us and and has immedi immediately helped on many occasions and still continue his support our students and we are really honored to have you here and it is a real pleasure to welcome you sir welcome sir I kindly welcome our Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Dr. T. Murugesan, sir, who has always rendered his full support for the upliftment of all our academic activities and is continuously working hard for our university's world ranking status. Welcome, sir. And now it's my great pleasure to welcome. Our Pro Vice Chancellor Tajuddin Sir for gracing this occasion, who has a vision of top research at our university. Welcome, sir. <laughs> and now I heartily welcome to our school dean, Dr. H. Siddhi Jailani Sir, who has constantly guiding us to run the department successfully by taking the actions meticulously. Welcome, sir. And now, I welcome our beloved professor and director of admission, Dr. S. S. M. Abdul Majid sir, who has been our constant motivator, yes, support throughout our department activities. Welcome, sir. And now, my hearty welcome to our coordinator of this program, Dr. J. Shahida Parvin. And uh, I would like to welcome all my faculty members, Dr. Basant Kumar Behera, Mrs. R. Dawlat Banu, and uh, Ms. J. Daphne, our lab technicians and non-teaching members, and my dear students who made this day come true. Last but not least, I express my sincere appreciation to everyone present here. Let us together make the symposium memorable and intellectually rewarding. Thank you and have a wonderful time learning and networking, Macron 2024. Thank you. Now, with great pleasure, I invite our respected Vice-Chancellor, Dr. T. Murugesan, to unfold the presidential address. Dear Dr. 
Ajish Babu. He is head of Common Development Apollo Tires. And Professor Tajuddin, Provost Chancellor. And Samsud Begum, President of this association. And the Shagida Paveen, the coordinator, and uh, our dean, Siti Jalani, and all our faculty members, and my dear students, and the participants of this symposium. First of all, let me apologize for the delay, as I have an unexpected program early in the morning. So there was a delay in half an hour, I think not more than half an hour, and we are really sorry about it. And of course, as um, mentioned by Samson, sometimes Samson they used to tell a lot of lies hmm? because he was our student. Don't believe it, whatever she said. Hmm? <laughs> she was my student, our student. <laughs> See, most of the time they tell lies about me. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> so don't take it seriously. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, okay, let's go. And of course, today we gathered here for the event of Macron 2024 which is the National Level Technical Symposium organized by the Department of Polymer Engineering of our President Institute of Science and Technology. And of course, I just would like to tell you a few words about these polymers, which I'm not very familiar with. And polymers are widely used in a number of industries, particularly very recently in aerospace, optical engineering, and of biological engineering too. Due to their excellent properties, and also these properties can be tuned based on the molecular weights and density, and it's most of the time corrosion resistance and a low coefficient of friction, and the possibility for mass production. It's simpler than other compounds when compared to the pharmaceuticals. It's slightly easier, even though it's very highly explosive reactions, but still we can produce it. It's widely recognized that the key to Maximizing the benefits of polymers is depends on the processing capacity and the processing quality and the precursors. With appropriate processing methods and parameters, the quality of the polymer can be re-engineered or redesigned. For particular applications of polymers, the integrity of the finished surface is of great interest in ensuring the quality of the workpiece in manufacturing process. Overall, the industrial applications of polymer is widely used in recently 5G communications, new energy vehicles, medical equipment, robots, building wirings, and mass transit, and most importantly in defense application, applications, military aerospace, and intelligent wear systems. An important feature affecting the applications of polymer is their molecular arrangement. Some substances can be amorphous without any structure or disorders. They are usually transparent and thus can be used, for example, for manufacturing of packaging and recently contact lenses too. In these types of polymers, the atoms are arranged in patterns forming crystalline structures. Such materials are opaque. This crystallinity of polymers can be controlled to some extent, which alters their properties for re-engineering and redesigning of the materials for the end use by increasing cell strength, stiffening, and chemical resistances. Even more, sophisticated technology recently uses polymers, for example, the membrane exclusively for water treatment and carriers used in controlled drug releases. The tissue engineering are the common uses very recently discovered. At this end, we must foster an environment that encourages collaboration and the exchange of ideas. In this aspect, we must support each other in research and development initiatives and identify the funding resources. It's not only stopping with the conference proceedings and presentation of papers, but we need to cooperate for a long way and we need to cooperate for application of fundings and other industrial aspects. So, in this con context, I look forward to have a fruitful discussion during these conferences and a clear and good networking and to the insights and recommendations that will emerge 
from this meeting today should add values to the existing system towards sustainable development as a whole. To conclude, I hope and trust that this conference provides a valuable platform for us to share our knowledge, re-exchange our ideas and collaborate to promote sustainable development practices and economic growth for the nation as a whole. With this few words, I wish you all the best and have a pleasant day today. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your valuable insights. Without, uh, without further ado, I kindly request Respector Dr. N. Tahajudan, our poor Vice Chancellor, to grace us with his presence on stage and deliver the inaugural address. Honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, this great institution, Christian Institute of uh, Science and Technology, the Chief Guest of uh, today's uh, function, Dr. Rajesh Babu, Division Head, Apollo Tires Limited, Chennai. The other dignitaries in the dais, Dr. Jailani Sir, Dr. Abdul, Abdul Majid. And uh, I profusely thank uh, the organizers of this uh, event, uh, Dr. Samsar Daham, so, who requested me to deliver the inaugural address uh, in this uh, uh, conference, MICON 2024. Uh, conducted by the Department of Polymeric Engineering. Let me extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you assembled here. Uh, uh, and your presence here not only enriches this event but also uh, underscores the collective enthusiasm and uh, dedication we share towards advancing the frontiers of uh, polymeric science and technology. The field of polymeric science and engineering is uh, the heart of the numerous uh, innovations that shape our modern world. It is the field that not only demands our intellectual curiosity, but also our commitment of sustainability, energy efficiency, and the material recycling. The symposium marks not just a milestone in the academic calendar of our university, but also melting pot of ideas, innovations, and knowledge sharing. So as a microbiologist of, uh, in my field, so I like to insist so one particular aspect on polymeric sciences which is most related to the polymeric engineering technology. For instance, uh, you know the microalgae, particularly cyanobacteria, it produces enormous quantity of the polymer, polysaccharides. Now these polysaccharides are useful in so many uh, avenues, particularly the desert countries like Saudi Arabia, Israel and uh, uh, Western countries, Eastern countries. Uh, <coughs> Because, you know, because of the enriched mucus formation, that is the polysaccharide formation of the microalgae, now the private companies grow the algae in ton, ton, tons and tons and they dump the algae, grown algae with the music, thick mucilage on the desert sand, sand. So what happened in the desert sand, because of the polysaccharide, it imbibes the water for a longer period and it keeps the moisture content in this polysaccharide. So if it is a moisture content in a longer period in the dry sand, uh, it invites the bacterial and fungal population. The bacteria releases the enzyme called the carbonic acid. It degrades the coarse sand particle to fine solid particle. So gradually the sterile soil, the sand soil, desert soil becomes the agriculturally uh, fertile soil. So now the countries are doing this kind of work. The other important point in microbes is, so it can produce the polysaccharides. So by, you know, if, for example, in some algae or cyanobacteria or bacteria, if it produces 10% of the polysaccharides, by, you know, the molecular techniques like CRISPR-Cas technology, we can enhance the polysaccharide production in uh, no time. So it is possible. And also, in addition to the production of the polysaccharides, we also have several microbes which degrades the plastics. So if the polymeric engineering science department is collaborate with microbiology or any biological science departments, definitely we will do a lot and we do the miracle in utilizing these polymers to develop them from the cyanobacteria or microalgae for our human welfare. So this is uh, my point, I like to say this, uh, and uh, everyone knows that, uh, we know, uh, 
what so far the polymeric engineering or polymeric <coughs> research aspects, the output of the polymeric science, we know everything. But we have to see what to do in the next course of duration. So we, uh, what kind of work we have to do, so we have to plan in such a way that, uh, so we can achieve a lot. So in this way, I really thank the eminent speaker, uh, the distinguished scientist, Dr. Rajesh Babu sir, so who is going to share his experience and expertise with you. I am sure that uh, you are definitely imbibed the new knowledge from his uh, enrichment lecture. I thank you sir profusely for your uh, presence here and uh, share your eminence, eminence and expertise to our students. And also I am very happy to know from uh, Dr. Sam Samsad Madam that uh, Dr. Rajesh Babu sir is uh, continuously support our university and uh, taking the internship students and uh, whatever uh, uh, help needed. So he is the first man to help. I am really happy and uh, see you in this mix. Uh. So as uh, you know, as a microbiologist and uh, you know, I also did some work on polymeric uh, polysaccharides and published some good papers in uh, uh, impact factor journals. But only lacking is we are not thinking on the industrial level application. So if uh, I collaborate with uh, Dr. Samsat Madam or uh, his colleagues, uh, definitely we will get uh, some uh, meaningful product uh, which will be useful for our mankind. So now we, we know what we have done, we have to see what remains to be done for our future. So from this, at least from this conference, uh, uh, we must unite together, work together, achieve together to the best, best of the best, only best, all the best. Thank you. Now I invite our Dean School of Mechanical Sciences, Dr. H. Siddhi Jailani sir, to present the felicitation address. Respected Pro Vice Chancellor, and our Chief Guest, Dr. Rajesh Babu, Divisional Head, Compound Development, Apparatus Limited, Chodi Polymer, Director Admission, Faculty and Students Coordinators, Faculty Members, participants and my dear students, good morning to all. First I congratulate all the participants because the participation is more important than winning the prize. So for the past several years, students participation in various activities is significantly less. The major problem faced by the department is that the students are not interested to face the challenge. The applause itself tells you actually what crescent is. Because uh, less than, according to my knowledge, I think less than 5% in universities in uh, India, those who are having actually A plus category. So, Crescent is one of them. And inside Crescent, Department of Polymer Engineering, that NBA actually, they used to uh, check it actually, what are the facilities in your department. Uh, they used to sit in the department for three days and they used to evaluate everything, your teaching, learning process, everything. Uh, what are your facilities, your machines are working, not working, uh, everything for three days, then they only they used to give it. And uh, I will tell proudly that actually in this university, the Department of Polymer Engineering got NB accreditation in 2002, that is for five years. 2002, for the information of uh, the student, those who, are, those who came from uh, outside, or my own students, those who might not have knows, so the Department of Polymer Engineering got for five years consecutively, once actually 2002, next time it happened in 2008, two times actually five, five years. So now recent actually, uh, in Tamil Nadu we have so many colleges, but five years nowadays actually rare, but Department of Polymer Engineering was have that much capability, so they got actually five years continuously. And at present, at present also, at present also the Department of Polymer Engineering is under NB accreditation. That shows that actually all the facilities are there in the department and the uh, faculties in the department are well qualified and they have that much of uh, depth of knowledge so that actually uh, to deal the situation for academically as well as such for uh, industry point of view. Because the Department of Polymer Engineering did some work for industries, uh, although I list few of them. So the department uh, sincere aim is to, uh, to equip the students with skill, knowledge, values that will help uh, into success and upright personal uh, The objective of the department is to provide technical services, manpower to polymer industries. 
the uh, department started actually 1996 by the time actually in india and particularly in chennai actually only limited car companies were there if i may correct i think sir rajesh sir the oragaram was not actually an industrial hub by that time so the management of this institute they thought actually what will happen maybe after five years ten years so before that they started actually department of polymer engineering in 1996 and the fruit actually many industries they got when i go for the placement of the department although rajesh also started actually company taking most of our students here actually almost 40 percent students my calculation for last three years 40 percent of the students 40 percent of the student immediately before that we may that exam that meant everything over from june first june first itself they are joining and by the june 30th they are getting the salary so by completing a program within four years from a core company and getting this actually salary by the end of uh, 30th day many parents because i'm in the department for uh, more than 16 years uh, so many times actually i face actually the parents and many parents happily they used to make a call that actually sir uh, my son or daughter got the salary today so that gave actually immense pleasure as a teacher and uh, uh, the facility wise sir actually we have all the things and uh, few of our uh, students few of our students they are in abroad Recently, actually, for last, I will not, don't want to go for actually the whole uh, uh, from 2000 onwards. Last two years, few of the students with uh, zero money in their hand, that means the hundred percent scholarship, hundred percent scholarship, they went abroad. One of them is actually Mr. Uh, Sriram Sinevasan, who is a 2021 pass out student. He never, uh, the parents never spend a single money and he is at present actually, he is in uh, Department of uh, Packaging Science, College of Engineering Technology, Rochester, Institute of Technology, Rochester, New York, USA. The other student actually recently gone, uh, he was a 2021 pass out, Suheluddin Hussain uh, is doing his MS in Advanced Materials and Innovative Recycling, University of Miskolk, uh, Hungary. And uh, another girl, uh, recently passed out only, uh, V. Susmita. And all these students actually, when actually no flight was moving actually during Corona, many of them, they got actually the opportunity to go abroad. And from the department wise, as well as from the institute level, whatever the documents required, we made that uh, ready. Abbas uh, Saif. He is in actually, uh, this Akron University actually, uh, Department of Polymer Engineering, Akron, in USA, is one of the best institute for actually for polymer engineering. So few of the students are actually, sir, uh, they have also joined there. Then, placement. In case of placement, uh, this recent pass out, that means 2023 pass out students. 2023 uh, three pass out students, uh, totally, 28 were the out of 28 24 26 26 already actually they are working and uh, most of them are in apollo tires and uh, few of them in mother son and the others are in some other companies and uh, many times actually is uh, the, the companies those who are actually in uh, outside chennai outside tamil Nadu, they used to call us I mean, there is a shortage of manpower for this. They used to call us, but uh, somewhere actually there is a, that is my observation. Somewhere our students have a uh, thing that actually, you know, I cannot join in Ralco in Haryana actually. That means food will be a problem, so that uh, otherwise actually that type of opportunity many times coming. But fortunately what these students are doing actually, after working four, five, six years, uh, some industry in Tamil Nadu, then whenever I am meeting after the, uh, some 10 years to those students, many times they will tell sir, we are working in Delhi. By that time they know me Hindi. So 
uh, some of them in Gurgaon and somebody will be in Delhi. So, uh, the department is having actually all the facilities and few of the recently uh, published papers uh, by the faculty of the department as well as uh, students. One of the paper, uh, as well as myself, Dr. Tirumurugan, Saida Parvin, Dr. Samsad Begum, uh, the influence of graphite filler on viscoelastic and mechanical properties of PCABS blend and Journal of Mechanical Engineering. Another paper uh, by Dr. Samsad Begum and colleagues, a study on nitrile rubber polyvinyl chloride blend vulcanization kinetics with different fillers by using single isothermal rheography in the journal, journal of Elastomers and Plastics. Another paper by Dr. Uh, Saida Parvin, uh, enhanced performance of electrospun polyethylene oxide, reduced graphene oxide polymer electrolyte for lithium ion batteries. It is in material letters in two, January 2002, 24 uh, publication. Another one, Dr. Saida Parvin, uh, highly sensitive detection of bacteria and toxin using novel pani, benzene, zol, uh, nano composite, uh, the material of research express 2023. Another one is by Sam uh, Saida Parvin in 2023. One more paper by myself, Dr. Tirumurugan, study of viscoelastic behavior of mechanical characteristics of graphite, graphene field, ABS composites. Then Dr. Samsal Begum with uh, the final year students of Pasau, they published paper. So there is a list of uh, publication where actually the student as well as the faculty are involved with the publication. Then similarly international conference uh, with the student as well as faculty and recently actually two days back I presented a paper at uh, international conference uh, in SRM University uh, with the topic of study on mechanical viscoelastic properties for uh, compression molded ABS and coconut fiber biocomposite and polypolyplots. We have a few patents sir, and uh, this one also I want to highlight because in this university patent the first grant of patent actually came from the Department of Polymer Engineering. That was by Dr. Yeah. Dr. Bahar was, this was the first one, sir. In this university, actually, when the first uh, patent came, that one is actually from the Department of Polymer Engineering. Dr. Basant Kumari, then uh, Dolod Banu, the faculty now here, uh, Agayatri Vikram, uh, those, are, those days, uh, research scholar. Porous hydrophobic polymer composite for separation of oil from oil spills, water and preparation method, and thereof. This same problem was there actually two months back. Two months back, until during that rain, in our north Chennai, actually oil was spilled out. Oil was spilled out in our north Chennai, and for that one, I think uh, Greater Chennai Corporation (GCC) they hired some people actually from Paradip Port of Odisha to clean it actually within a specific uh, time, I think 30 days, and it's over. So this uh, patent was actually related to that one. Then we have another patent with Dr. Reyes, Samsad Begum, with final year students, where students were involved, a system and method of uh, for automated molding process. Another one by Dr. Samsad Begum and few students, that is a synergetic tire thread formulation and a composite comprising this same. And one more is there. We have book chapters, we invited talk, there are student uh, achievement, very recently, uh, I think four or five days back, our third year students, Ramya Sri, Anis, Manoj, Logesh Sri, uh, they got first prize in the paper presentation category, conducted by uh, SRM University. The same students, they also got the first prize in uh, Poster presentation. And the yeah. same one was on his Ramasri Logeshwari, they are third year students. They got first prize per presentation category at national level symposium conducted by Department of Nanotechnology, that is in Savita University. Raja Sundar, he won a prize on the topic uh, Polymer in Biomedical Applications at Madras Medical College. <laughs> Mahmud, Majud, Riyaz Khan, Kursid, 
and Dr. Samsad Begum presented a paper at the National Conference entitled Eco-Friendly Hybrid Biocomposite Material for Materials Engineering. Same team, uh, they presented one more sustainable uh, polymer reinforced with innovative filler preparation and characterization. So, uh, there are many so many other things that are actually to talk, sir, but based on my experience of in the department. So, any student, those who particularly came from outside, Anything you want to talk about the department, what are the facilities, what we have. Uh, parallelly, when actually the, the program will go, at that time also you can talk uh, with me or our any friends regarding actually the department of polymer engineering or department, sorry, not department, alone for the uh, university. Because the university is actually one of the, like department is 96 first in Tamil Nadu as a private department for uh, Department of Polymer Engineering. Similarly, this college also, it, uh, actually 1984, this is the first college as a private private engineering college. So, college-wise, or university-wise, actually, you can see, uh, those, particularly the students who come from outside, to see our facility. Now also, people are there, uh, actually roaming, from many states, from Haryana to many other places and outside actually the program is going on on Kavadi actually. And here sir, in the department of polymer engineering, this is my last to tell. Here the students are there from northeast, from northeast of uh, Manipur up to Kerala. Although the strength is less, but from e many states and from Andhra Pradesh people are there from uh, Karnataka people are there, Manipur, huge group are there. Uh, so the uh, breadth of our students actually uh, varied from, people used to tell sir actually from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, but I am telling actually from Northeast to Kerala. Sir. Thank you sir, thank you for uh, Thank you sir. I request Chief Guest to release the technical magazine, Poly Links. 2024. I request all other dignitaries to join along with the chief guest. Dr. J. Shahida Parvin to introduce the guest of honor for today's function to everyone present here. Good morning to the respective dignitaries in the dais and one and all present here. It's my pleasure to introduce our distinguished chief guest, Dr. Rajesh Prabhu Ramanujan, an accomplished professional and beacon of excellence. He was graduated from Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Kharagpur with a doctorate in rubber technology, followed by a postdoctoral fellow in the Institute of Polymer Research, Dresden, Germany. Dr. Rajesh Babu presently serving as Divisional Head in Compound Development at Global R&D Apollo Tires Limited, Chennai. He is responsible for compound development for passenger vehicles, 2 and 3 vehicle category, technology development for pre-development PV projects. Additionally, he is serving as a team lead for the industry university project supported and funded by Apollo Tires. 
He has 15 years of industrial experience, entire and tire related industries. His area of expertise includes rubber materials and compounding technology, viscoelastic properties of filled and unfilled elastomers, physics of tire traction and wear. He has 25 research papers published in peer-reviewed international journals, three book chapters, and have participated in various international conferences to deliver lectures. I am proud to say that he is a member of the Indian Rubber Institute, an affiliated technical organization of rubber division, American Chemical Society, Akron, USA. He has also served as a doctoral scrutiny committee member for PhD funded projects and external member for the student faculty development program in other universities. We are honored to have you here, sir, in this wonderful occasion. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. As a token of appreciation, I would like to request our respected Vice Chancellor, Dr. T. Murugesan, to honor our chief guest, Dr. R. Rajesh Babu, Divisional Head of Compounding Development, Apparatus. I see this conference as a gathering of like-minded members dedicated to push the boundaries of polymer engineering and technology. So I have a special uh, respect to this uh, institute. I will come to the polymer technology later. I will come to this institute because exactly 23 years before, I did my B.Tech in Kamaraj College of Engineering and Technology, which is in the southern part of India, near Madurai. And I was a student and we are the first batch. Okay. So, during that time, the, there will be limitations of uh, books, limitations of articles, limitations, everything was there. I used to travel, or as a team, we used to travel from southern part of India to Chennai, and particularly Crescent Engineering College as well as MIT. So, we used to collect notes, lecture notes, and everything. So, I am indirectly being an alumni of this, not as a direct alumni, somehow I am got benefited by this institute. So at this moment, I would like to take two names, one Dr. Abdul Majid and Dr. Vasanta Kumari. So they used to mentor us even though we are not the direct student. So I always have a special respect to Kassan Engineering College. So this is uh, about this. And uh, first, I would like to wish a grand success for this conference and I pray for that. Second, I thank this organizing committee for inviting me and uh, giving an opportunity to interact with the students. So with this, I can go to my keynote lecture, which will take another 30 minutes, sir, and I believe you will be completely occupied. And uh, if you allow, I can go for the lecture. No, you can.
and we do not know what is going to be June 2024. And this global warming is mainly because of one thing, greenhouse gas emissions. And here comes why this uh, uh, temperature rise is happening. The global temperature mainly depends upon how the energy of the planet receives from the sun and how much it is radiated back. It is the chemical composition in the atmosphere is not allowing the heat to radiate back. So that leads to the temperature rise. Now what will be the impact? Most of this information we are aware. But I would like to repeat it again for the purpose of understanding and enhancing for better living. So you might be knowing that why this guy is telling the same story. But there is an importance here. If you are not correcting now, we will complete the tutorial. The poor practices of the last decade leads to an imbalance in the natural energy. That leads to this global warming and climate change. And as a polymer engineer, we are having a greater role than any other engineers in this world. End of this presentation, you will realize why we are discussing too much about sustainability in this polymer society. We are having a greater role than anyone else. So this gives a glimpse about uh, the greenhouse gas effect. These greenhouse gas effects will make an acidification in the ozone that deteriorates the marine kingdom. Not only the marine kingdom, it will have a changes in the precipitation, changes in the intensity of weather. Uh, disrupt the ecosystem, alters the food web and impact the timing of the biological events. One short example, there is an article called Warming weather is harmful for the insects. The insects which is exposed to 5 degree increase in temperature for 10 days has disrupted in the reproductive system. It is not, we cannot take insects as a small thing. It is directly connected for our living being. So this is the effect of global warming. Second, the abortion rate of the ovulation problem for the cows was high in terms of summer time. So this global warming is directly affecting our ecosystem. It's like a snowball effect. If you open up one problem, it will lead to another four or five problems. This is mainly happening because of our poor practices that has happened in the last 50 years. And now we are going to correct it. And this is the uh, World Health Organization estimation. What is the com implications of this climate change? One trillion dollars are expected to be towards the coastal areas due to rising uh, seas and a greater survival. And five million people are expected to lack sufficient water. And one billion people are expected to be displaced by the environmental hazards and 100 million people are expected to be pushed into the poverty. So this is the report by the World Health Organization. We are directly impacted by this greenhouse gas. Now let's indicate where these greenhouse gases are coming from. So we are hierarchically understanding why it is important, from where it is coming, what is the consequences of this. It is coming from the energy resources. Energy is from industry, transportation and buildings. So these are the three areas where the energy is being utilized. That leads to the formation of greenhouse gases. When understanding what type of greenhouse gases, this carbon dioxide is the main culprit. That is the one which distracts the ecosystem. It is mainly coming from the transportation and uh, from burning from the fossil fuels from our car, truck and ship and trains and planes. <coughs> now when this greenhouse egg show up? When it just started? It just started just 100 years before. Not that we are existing for more than 5000 years. But recent 100 year practices has made us to increase in the temperature and increase in the CO2 gas emission. So increase in temperature might be very small number, it is just 1 degree Celsius. This 1 degree Celsius is very very significant for a global warming. A 1 degree global temperature change is significant because it takes a vast amount of heat to warm all the ozone, all the uh, ozones and atmosphere and the land masses. As I told, this is having direct connection with the respiratory systems and it is uh, connecting with the uh, fertility and the humankind. So everything is interconnected. 
that's the reason that according to the world uh, organization the paris agreement countries has agreed to limit the growth of the temperature not more than 1.5 degrees celsius every company every country is putting lot of effort to reduce this temperature now the most important aspect is that who is responsible for this we are responsible for this this is an interesting or very famous quote from this uh, john muir when we try to pick up anything by itself we find it hitched to everything else in this universe so everything is connected to everything else in this universe we may think that we are just throwing the carry bags in the atmosphere that is not going to harm anything but the implications is very very complicated not immediately but definitely and there is a beautiful statement on the sustainability part it's very very beautiful even today after 25 years we are using this statement sustainable development is a development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs so whatever the practices we are doing today it should not disturb the future practices now we might be students maybe after 10 years 20 years you will be your parents so this is the implication of sustainability all this happens because of an imbalance happened in this ecosystem like democracy this concept of sustainable development is only present competitive and absolutely necessary concept and the sustainability will try to make a balance of social economical and environmental aspects so this is a beautiful definition of sustainability now the question is that what is the role and importance of polymer engineers contributing for the sustainability right when we saw that fossil fuels is a major contributor for this greenhouse gas emission right and how we are going to address this so in the global outlook we are going to reduce the dependency and dependence of fossil fuels and find an alternate fuels and in the local outlook you produce the material which is biodegradable in nature or by recycling the material from one form to other form and make it reliable so this is the answer for this question how we are going to address this so we are coming to answer the first question the dependence of the fossil fuel the recent advancement is called electrification we know that electrical cars are pumping into the system and have a look on this fossil fuel car emits 12 times more carbon dioxide per mile than electrical cars and this is a comparison which is published by us environmental agency a gas powered vehicle and an electric powered vehicle 411 grams of co2 per mile for 1 to 4 to the some kilometer miles and another 32 grams of co2 this includes material and manufacturing of batteries there is lot of debate happening how the manufacturing of battery how we are going to dispose all those things people are working on that otherwise this graph will not exist you see the exponential growth of electrification in the world forget about india any guess how much vehicles in india when compared to us and europe we normally used to since see this presentation i will narrow it down to the automotive sector because i am from automotive the sustainability is a very very big topic and i personally uh, feel happy to talk about sustainability because at the end of the presentation you will also feel the same thing any idea what is the motorization rate uh, rate in india why most of the automotive companies are coming to india for every 1000 members in us there are 700 vehicles in europe it is 600 vehicles in japan it is 400 vehicles in china it is 200 vehicles in india 42 vehicles for 1000 members only 42 vehicles are being is the motorization rate in india so there is a great potential for automotive sectors to grow in india that's what most of the automotive sectors are putting their manufacturing plant in india it is not the curse it is the opportunity 
there might be a story that uh, I don't want to repeat. Two persons went and they saw a place where nobody was wearing the chapel. One salesperson said there is no potential of selling the shoes. Another is told that I see a lot of potential because nobody is wearing the shoes. This automotive sector is also like that. When the motorization is 50, and on average, the motorization in the global is around 400. And we are far, far behind that. And now, why this industries is connected to the polymer engineering? The future slides will explain. So now, coming from automotive to only two areas where the polymer engineers have the biggest role. I am not going into the biomedical field, energy field or uh, uh, other industries. I will confine to the talk only to the tire industry or automotive industry. There are two polymer areas which the automotive industry is looking for the polymer technologies was one is tire, another one is plastic. So let's have a look of the, the tire industry. How tire industry is contributing for this greenhouse emission is the discussion that low rolling resistance tire is directly connected to the fuel efficiency that is directly connected to the carbon dioxide emission. For the last 50 years, tire industry is continuously, this graph will uh, explain, tire industry is continuously exploring the opportunity to reduce the rolling resistance of the tire. From 25 to 6. And the rolling resistance can account up to 20% of the vehicle total fuel consumption. When there is a 25% or a reduction in the 50 percentage, which is equal to 15 percentage of the energy saving. Just connect that where the energy is being drained, which consequences for the greenhouse gas or the transportation sector. It is very, very important role the transportation sector is playing. Okay. So as a polymer engineer, we are having a role here. So tire industries are evolving not without polymer engineers. It is evolving with polymer engineers only. And this is the uh, snapshot about the growth potential of the electrical tires. And we saw that electrical cars are getting uh, inculcated into the system where there is a lot of energy saving is there, sustainability initiative is there. And this is the growth potential, see, more than 20 percent is growth benefit. So the vehicle industry market. So most of the presentation I will show only this business uh, graph because this market is directly connected to the demand and that is connected to the technological advancement and technological advancement connected to the technologies and it is connected to the polymer technologies. So, so this is the flow. So here we can see 21.7 percentage is the gross annual growth rate of electrical vehicle tires. I am not telling electrical vehicle, electrical vehicle tires. Now coming to the automotive plastics. The market rate is expected to grow in 7 percentage. There are two driving forces for this. One, the increasing usage of lightweight products owing to the strict rules and fuel economy restrictions is likely to be the demand for the automotive plastic market. Here they have given explicitly the rise in the government policies and enhance their infrastructure in the EVs in China and India this is expected to boost the growth of the market in near future. And if you see from this graph, 41 percentage is the contribution from the Asian specific. Asian specific includes India, China, Japan, those Asian specific countries. So this is the potential of the tire industry and the automotive plastic industries. And I strongly believe that this growth potential is majorly will be supported by the polymer engineers and polymer technologies. Now coming to the sustainability part, as I told sustainability deals with the, uh, in a nutshell we can say that it is an initiative to find a balance between the nature and the human being. It's like balancing the ecosystem. 
earlier for last two decades we are in the linear economy where linear economy was globally accepted since industrial revolution and resulted in a solid waste approximately 1.3 million tons in 2010 and 2.2 million tons in 2025 and this is the reason for all this global warming problem now the business model new business model is a circular economy the key difference between linear and circular is linear economy focus on profitability and circular economy focus on the sustainability the initial principle of circular economy focused on only three yards when it's reduce reuse and recycle as we evolve this three yards is being now converted into seven r now what are the seven r's how these tire industries are going to contribute for or what are the initiatives taken in the seven r will be described in the future slides now before going to the sustainability initiatives let us see a short look on world of tires 3. Point million units was produced in 2016 and it has grown up to 4 percentage and we can expect another 5 percentage till 2040 so tire industry going to survey for another 20-30 years the vehicle industry may evolve from fossil fuels to electrical fuels but as of now polymer is going to survey can we take it in that way hmm? now this is the Indian scenario India produces 6.5 lakh tires every day. Any idea how many tire industries are expanding their production capabilities in India? Out of 10 tire industries, 6 tire industries are expanding their production capabilities. Why? Now we are competing with the world leading technologies and we are delivering the tire as per their requirement. In 2035, there will be around 80 million passenger vehicles and 235 million two-wheelers on the road in India. And this leads to 1.7 million plus waste tires are generated every year worldwide and this is 6 percentage in India. Please note this, park this point now and we will answer this question, how we are going to discuss this in the future slides. So in a nutshell, 60 percentage of the world tire manufacturing plants located in Asian countries, China, India, Thailand, Taiwan, Vietnam. So we are having a strong hold on the tire industries. Now these are the strategies for the circular economy. Redesign, renew, reduce, reuse and repair, recover and recycle. So let us spend at least a half minute for each and every sector then we may be able to realize how much initiatives we are taking from the tire industries and the role of polymer engineers. So redesign when it is coming the conventional tire is being slightly modified to enhance the mobility and improve the safety and fuel economy. One is run flat tires. We might be knowing that the air inside the tire is going to carry the load. When the air is not there, are we going to stop the vehicle there? We have to move forward. So the run flat tire is evolving. What is the main component for the run flat tire? A lightweight material. Even the air is not there the lightweight material as well. Have you ever seen the lightweight aluminum has been presented into the tire? It is again a polymer. Second one is airless tire. The Michelin is the forefather of this tire industry. They have introduced the radial tires into the market. Now within the last 100 years, that is the biggest innovation in the tire industry. And now Michelin is venturing into the next stage of tire revolution is airless tire. And this airless tire, 80% is polymer related material. See the polymer technologies are like in compatibilizers. There are some uh, core chemistry, physics, science group, there are some engineering groups and this technology is the one they are going to compatibilize. And we are going to transfer the information from one area to another area. And as a polymer engineer, you know the role of compatibilizer. The compatibilizer will enhance the properties only. The most important element. So we are having a strong role how to connect this science and engineering. Okay. So the third important was embedded tire sensors. This is very very important. Although tire sensors is electronically based but 
this should not affect the performance of the layer. That is the complex here. And when we discussed about the air inside the tire, uh, I'll give you an example that how this air is playing a biggest role. A five percentage loss of air is a normal for any tire in a month. If you are not looking it, what is the consequences we are going to face? The fuel efficiency will be compromised by two percentage, and the tire life will be compromised by thirty percentage. It might be seems to be small, but as a consequence, it's like a slow poison. We are killing the product by our improper practices. So, in order to avoid that, tire industries, we are venturing into the tire sensors, collaborating with the electronics industry to enhance the life. Second one is to reduce, as I told. Reduce is to reduce the rolling resistance of the tire. We have evolved to reduce the rolling resistance in the last two decades by almost 30-40 percent each. Now, after the electrification, further reduction in the rolling resistance is being invited by the members. And there is a common challenge for the electrical vehicle. You know the, the range. If you charge one time, how much kilometer is going to cover? Tire is playing a bigger role because if we are reducing the rolling resistance, it can enhance the range so that people are comfortable. Second, if we are using lightweight materials, it is again going to reduce the weight of the vehicle. It is going to enhance the range of the batteries. So it is not the battery technology; it is an polymer is an associated technology to enhance the life of the battery. So electric vehicles is a boom for the polymer technologies to venture more. Now coming to the renewable material. Now the natural rubber is the most widely used material, and now it is available only in the tropical climate, either in the Kerala or the northeast region. Now the world community is looking for an alternative from the other climatic conditions. So normally this natural rubber needs a tropical climate. The uh, very uh, moister uh, environment it used to grow normally kerala and northeast is the best place but world community is working to explore the other climatic conditions now this uh, evolved to form a russia dandelion and goyali these are the other alternatives of natural rubbers because now we have to come out of these fossil fuels and second this silica was normally from the earth crust we understood that it is not sustainable it is going to deplete so we are changing from normal silica to rice husk silica and oils to a bio oils fillers to a bio fillers like cellulose nano fibers cellulose materials all these things are started it will evolve when silica was first introduced in this industry 25 years before people were very reluctant to touch that because at that point of time we don't have the technology to use but now today without silica no tires will be on the road because it has given an unmatched potential of rolling resistance and the grip characteristics that is connected to the safety no tires in the road is of uh, without silica so every industry will evolve and coming to the repair the self healing materials are gaining more importance because when the damage is happening it has to cure itself and similarly for the tires the abuse conditions or many external damages it has to cure it has to enhance the life that is the main objective now next three areas is the most critical areas for the tire industry is reuse an amount of natural resources used is if it is 100 percentage when we are retreading 73 percentage is being utilized that is the potential of retreading and a very retreading tires enable saving of 70 percentage resource extraction 29 land use co2 emission is reduced so on so so on so on so there are many potential i am not going in detail so retreading is also a way to further enhance the life of the tire now the second last was this recovery how we are recovering the energy once the tire is prepared we are putting lot of energy into the tire to make 
the rubber material, raw material into the tire aspects. There are two recoveries happening. One is material recovery, another one is energy recovery. You see this energy recovery, tires, it is 50 percent cheaper than the coal. And how much energy it is reducing, uh, giving? 32. Whereas the coal? 20. It is only 27. And CO2 emission is lower than the coal. That's being one reason that in India most of the tire industries, uh, tire are being used as an energy recovery. But as a consequences, we are having a big problem of the pollution. Since it is cheaper, we are exploiting that material of not thinking about reuse and repair, we are directly putting into the energy part. And there are several other ways to enhance the potential like uh, pyrolysis, gasification, incineration, these are some of the secondary way of utilizing the tire. The last one was recycle. Now production of uh, the scrap tires, how we are going to make a new life? There are several technologies available, break down the scrap tires and put it again back to the system. And if you are looking that way, it is not beneficial. We could not be able to get not more than 5 percentage. Out of 100 percentage tires we prepared, we could be able to give it back to the original system is only 5 percentage. Where this 95 percentage is going? It is either going to the landfill or to the burners, but it is not being completely utilized. So there are now several initiatives happening like devulcanization. Vulcanization is the one which converts this viscous into elastic, which converts this thermoplastic or uh, viscous nature into an elastic nature. So we are selectively breaking this cross linking to enhance the life. So these are the several initiatives which the tire industries we are working to enhance the life of the tire and I strongly believe this will happen only because of the polymer engineers and again I believe it is not only by the polymer engineers we have to associate it with the other technologies to make it happen. It applies to every stream not only polymers. You take any industries if they are not having an association with other technologies they cannot grow. Battery industry is growing alone. It includes three metallurgy, chemical engineering and the physics. All these three streams are working together for the battery. So this applies to every technology. We have to collaborate with them. So now coming to the second part, I will take another 10 minutes. First we have seen the potential of tyre and the role of polyimidine. Second one was plastics. So virtually 100 years before there is no plastic. Now in the last 100 years we are having plastic and you see in the last uh, 30, 40 years the growth potential and this is mainly because of the three important characteristics which other materials are not giving one is flexibility, durability and ease of manufacturing and if you are segregating the usage of plastics it is going in three areas the majorly shared by the plastic industry uh, this packaging second by transportation and third by the construction part so I am not going into the packaging as well as uh, construction, let us go into the uh, transportation. So this is about the transportation market. Plastic is bifurcated into two streams, one is automotive bioplastics, another one is automotive lightweight plastics. And this is the growth potential, uh, it will be a bit difficult for us to understand the numbers but what we can see, it is going to continue. because of sustainability, the polymer engineers are having more responsibility than any other engineers. The driving force for bioplastics as we know, it is because of the environmental demand and the regulatory impact. But the problem is that limited availability and the cost is very high. There are challenges. Coming to the lightweight materials, the demand for low fuel efficiency or low fuel consumption and these restraining factors are high metal cost. Now these are some of case studies, I am not going in detail. I will come to the plastic and sustainability part. This is the numbers that the sustainability of plastics is defined in the reduce, reuse and recycle. As I told the packaging is 
the dominating one, the 98 percentage of the total packaging weight of the goods is single use and it is thrown into the environment. And this is about the pet bottles, reusable pet containers contributes to the 50 percentage if you are considering for the recycling part. Third is recycle. The recycling business potential is around 60 billion in 2021. So a large portion of plastic waste ends up in the landfill and leak of the environment. This plastic takes hundreds of years to decompose. And during this time, it can break down the microplastic that pollutes the ecosystem and potentially harm the wildlife. So the ultimate solution for this is waste management. This is a, a survey and this dark blue color shows that the global mismanaged plastic waste. India is leading that. We cannot tie claim that we are the largest producers of tire of a plastic. We are most mismanaged system to make use of this. India has the potential to seize US 20 billion opportunities by 2030 for recycling plastics, electronic waste and batteries. And one interesting thing which I recently come across was this wood plastic composites where they are using this recycled plastic, recycled wood dust or the crop. You might be hearing from the North India, lot of crop wastes are being stubbles are burned. It is going into the ashes and it is producing greenhouse gases. So these two ways are combined together to form a wood plastic composites and that leads to different applications like indoor applications, garden. So this is enhancing the, uh, the repair activities of the residential sectors across the global. This is being recently it is getting more important. So the final point here. It is not the problem with the polymeric material, it is the problem associated with the practice. So when someone is telling that plastic is deteriorating the environment, stay strong and rise and then say it is not the polymer, it is a practice. Pet bottles for 80 percentage recovered by European Union. There is a vending system, if you are buying a pet bottle, either it is a beverages or a water bottle, anything, you can give it back to the same company. Like 18, there will be vending machines. It is in practice. I personally was in Germany. I saw that 15 years before. And it was in place for last 25 years. Coming about the tyre, Japan has utilised 80% of their tyre. It is not going to the landfill. They are using the different, different purposes. It is not that new thing which you are going. It is already known. But we are not following that. It is either because of the government policies or the personal interest. So, a point here, there is a huge potential for the polymer engineers to hold the key to answer the most pressing problem was global warming. And it is not because of the polymer, it is because of the practices. So, finally, I would like to conclude by harnessing the power of innovation and collaboration, we can shape the future where polymers play a vital role in building a more sustainable future. It is possible only by the collaboration and innovation. We cannot stand alone and then say we are growing. It is not possible. As a polymer engineer, you have to expand your knowledge also. Second, future generation will thank us for giving clean, safe and good quality of life. There are some end user end users responsibility. I will give you two examples. One, this is the contribution of fuel efficiency. You see, the biggest factor is driving style. We are putting lot of effort, energy to reduce the rolling resistance of the tire weight 100 grams, 200 grams. But only by the driving style, more than 20 percentage is being contributed. So it is end user responsibility. Second one was the disposable. We are just throwing even there is no good practices in our society also. So all these practices will further enhance the position of the polymer engineers. 
So sustainability is not a statement, it is a commitment. So let us commit and grow together. As a Apollo Tires, we are having a strong stand on the sustainability commitment. And 2050, we disclosed we will be a carbon neutral. So whatever the production from the tire is going back to the tire industry. It is not by Apollo Tires. The top five tire companies in the world, Bridgestone, Continental, Michelin, your, uh, Apollo Tires, and other companies has decided that by 2050 it has to be carbon neutral. When such commitment is going to happen, and you might be now realizing the potential of the polymer, I am completely convinced that role of polymer engineers for this. And I strongly believe that, I made you convinced that we are having a huge responsibility than anyone else in this society. So I thank everyone for your patience and time. Any questions, I am happy to Casually, that when I was having a when I was in your position, I was asking these questions to myself that why they are telling about these microplastics. Any idea why these microplastics was ignored so much time? Yeah, about 40 percentage of these plastics is somewhere going directly, indirectly into the ozone. And we are not normally seeing that. Now it has been escalated, it is coming to the surface. Second example I will there are some controllable parameters and non-controllable parameters. The tire is running in the road, okay. for example passenger tire, a 10 kg tire. When it is covering 50,000 kilometers, the tire weight will be around 8 kg. 2 kg of tires will be dissolved as a microplastics in the road. Can we able to control that? The here comes these advanced technologies to enhance the abrasion resistance of the rubber. We can we cannot eliminate, we can reduce. So I would like to reiterate the statement that uh, if you want to, if you are using the, uh, if you are underestimating the potential of the pen, you will just only scratch in the notebook, you cannot make any drawing or you cannot make any stories. It applies to the polymer engineers. It is up to us how we are going to leverage this technology to the next level. Don't worry about this single use plastic has been uh, eliminated, so there is no growth. Of course, it is going to make our life much more easier. We are going to the next level from a commodity product to an engineering product. Okay. So, thank you all. Anivar Kumarakam. It's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the Department of Polymer Engineering and the student of the Association of Polymer Engineers. First of all, we thank the almighty office plan to bring the old and con congregation the leading authority of every unit together to share a work with and look into the progress of our congregation as a family. So let us thank the God. I thank our esteemed chief guest. Dr. R. Rajesh Babu, Divisional Head, Compound Development, Apollo Tires, Chennai, for conceding to our request for delivering an excellent lecture. I thank you, sir, for uh, taking the time of your busy, uh, busy schedule to be with us. I thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. D. Murugesan, for delivering the presentation address. I thank our dy Dynamic Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. N. Tajuddin, for delivering the inaugural address. I would like to thank our Dean School of Mechanical Sciences, 
Dr. Siddhi Jailani, who has been always encouraging for all our departmental activities. I thank our beloved professor, Dr. SSM Abdul Maji, who has been a constant motivator. My sincere thanks to our head of the department, Dr. S. Shamshad Begum, President APE, for being the motivation of these students. And our APE coordinator, Dr. J. Shaida Parveen, for perishing the hours to organize the event with all the uncharted effort and backbone of our success. I extend my gratitude to our professor, Dr. Basant Kumar Behra and Ms. Dawlat Banu, ma'am, for guiding us in conducting this event successfully. I thank our final years, joint secretary and student coordinators for their purposeful efforts for this event. And I also like to thank our students who have been up to my pillar support throughout the event. And I also welcome our alumni, Ms. P. N. Swaminathan and Kolo Tungar for this event. I also thank our non-teaching staff. Thank you. Nandri Manakam.